Well, up to this point, what we've done is we've created a very simple two-column layout using a float-based design. It was fixed, and as you can see, I'm just previewing it in the browser so you can see what it looks like. And if you remember, we styled the content in the navigation area, in the main content area, as well as in the header. We didn't really do anything inside of the footer, but you know everything that we've done in the other areas could be used in the footer as well. Well, at this point, what I want you to do is, or what we're going to do, is to turn this two-column layout, navigation and main, into a very standard, very common three column layout and with you know the understanding of a two and three column float based design there's literally so many different things that you could do if you wanted to create multiple styles and different kinds of layout so let's turn this two column layout into a three column layout in Dreamweaver and how are we going to do that? Well let's go to our design that we've been working on and as you can see you know we've got our header area, we've got our nav area, and there's a little comment that tells us where it ends. The main area with all of the text inside of it collapsed. And the footer. Well, in between the main and the footer, what I'm going to ask you to do is to just indent here a little bit, and we're going to insert a div here. Same thing that we did last time, insert div tag. Now I could write it right here in the ID, but what I'm going to do is to say new CSS rule. And at this point, I'm going to ask you to go and choose ID. So when we are choosing the ID, we're going to give it the name R call, short for right column. Not really anything special here. And again, you can call these things whatever you want. That's part of the beauty of working with these IDs. So after we do that, the only definition I really want to do for our call at this point here, category, we're going to go to box. Since the navigation on the left-hand side is 200, we're going to make the width of this one also be 200. And we're going to float this on the right because we want it on the right-hand side. So if I click apply, well, nothing's really showing up. So I'm going to click OK and then we're going to click OK here. Well, first of all, let's notice there's a couple of things that have happened. Well, if I go to my design view, you can see that, you know, the ID for right column goes here, content goes here, but what you might notice is that it's not on the right-hand side. It's just over here underneath the nav. Not at all what I want. So why is it doing that and how can we, you know, rectify that problem? Well, first of all, here, I've got right column here. I'm just going to move it down after the main and just before the, f the footer. It'll make a little bit more sense. So why is it doing this? Well, if you remember, the wrapper which is holding the whole thing together is set to be 900 pixels wide. It's fixed pixel. So we got 200 pixels here, and we also gave the main area a an amount of 500 pixels. So let's go to our main, and you could either enter it in right here, or you could hit the Edit button a little easier for you to see. I'm gonna say, well, first of all, let's change this to 500. Notice how it's floating on the right-hand side as well. So if we apply this and we click OK, you'll see it's not really OK. I mean, this thing is supposed to be on the right-hand side, but it's not because this has been asked to float on the right-hand side as well. So what are we gonna do? Well, we want this in the middle. There is no float middle, so we have to select the main again and if I go to category box, we're going to float this on the left. And as soon as we do that, you can see now that we have our information in place. And it looks great. Okay, a couple of things in here. First of all, we do know that this main has padding on the top for 10 pixels to push the content down. That's cool. We're going to do the same thing on this one. But in order to make it look halfway decent, Let's grab some text, and I'll even grab this headline, and I will copy it. You can say Control-C, Control-V, or you can go to um, Copy by right-clicking. And now I'm just going to paste the information in here. All right, so we've got some information in here. Notice this is a H2 at the moment. However, if I wanted to, sure, I can make it a H1 as well. If we go into our split screen, let's just clean up a little bit of this text here first and foremost. I'm going to select everything inside and collapse it. See, there's my right column information. We're, we can also separate the information that is here so that it looks a little bit cleaner. So there's right column. I'll even put in a little comment here, a little HTML comment that says ends our call. That's cool. 
All right, and now what we're going to do is go about styling this particular page. So let's just uh, hit the return key here so I can make two paragraphs. As you'll see, we'll get to that in a second. All right, so here's our call, and if I put my cursor inside here, notice um, it does seem like there's some um, padding in this already, but there isn't. Um, don't be fooled by what's going on here. If we were to just preview this in the browser, and certainly we can save that, you can see that you know there's no padding on that, even though there seems to be some on this padding here for the paragraphs, but we'll just go about making sure that all the elements inside here will react the way we want them to. So what do I want? We have our cursor inside the H1. I'm going to come in here and we're just going to be less specific and say our column H1. Mm, let's make sure we get that same information for the paragraph. So space P as well. Click OK. And what do we want to do with this? Well, really, I just want to add some padding here on the right and the left-hand side. Look, padding at 20. That should be good. And anything else? Well, I mean, certainly we could go in here and say, yeah, make it all Verdana, although, you know, it's not really going to do anything at the moment. So now we can specifically address how we want the H1s to look. So nothing else, just our call H1. And I'm going to say, well, let's make it white. Whoops, not red, but white. Let's make it smaller in size because I want it smaller than the other ones. Uh, I could still have it italicized. If I'm not mistaken, we've got the other ones italicized as well. OK, cool. And maybe just at the bottom, I'll put a little bit of padding, or actually rather, I'll put a little bit of margin just at the bottom, like a little four or something, just to create a little bit more space there. All right, cool. So at this point, I'm going to put my cursor inside one of these paragraphs. And I'm going to try and go here where I know that there are two paragraphs. And I'm just going to create a new, less specific, R call P. So what do we want our paragraphs in right column to look like? Well, we already said Verdana, so that's cool. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller in point size than the other one. So 11 should be fine. Line height, not as generous as the other ones, but still I will apply some line height. So give us some space. And you can see that our paragraphs don't really have space between them. That's why I made two in here. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to go to the category called box. And let's put a little margin on the bottom of these. Maybe 10 pixels should be enough. So there you go. Now we've got that element in place. Now the only thing that I would also want to do, if you remember, we generally try to avoid putting anything on these boxes with regards to margin or padding, especially on the left and the right hand side. But as I previously mentioned, putting a little padding on the top or the bottom of this box, not really a problem, not really going to throw things off. It'll be consistent in all your browsers, and if it's not consistent, well, everything should still push down the exact same amount for this and this and this because I'm gonna say right column will have let's edit this rule not so much margin because if we put margin on the top check it out look uh, I could come in here and say look 10 margin and if we did that you know things would move but look it's the outside of the box that's been moved it's not really what I want so I'm gonna take that off instead I'm gonna put 10 on the padding of the top and notice the box stays at the top with everything else but it's the content that's pushed down a little bit so if I go to the design view ah, now you can see you've got all of these elements in place we can preview this in our browser previewing in Safari here and as you can see good stuff we've got our three column layout got all of our information in place. This is a little bit smaller than this one, which is absolutely appropriate simply because, you know, it's probably supplemental information, not the main information that we're looking for in here. That's why we called this one main and this one just our column. So now you got a nice three column layout. And what we're going to do with this three column layout is in the next lesson, we'll learn how to turn this three column fixed pixel layout. If you remember, fixed pixel doesn't move. It's always fixed at that amount. Um, and we'll turn it into something called a liquid based layout. And liquid layouts will have a few things that I'll need to show you in order to make them appear as good as you want them to be. So come back and we'll do that.